Good afternoon, everyone. Present here, I am Yashashvi Rupani uh, from PBA first year semester first section B, and today I am here to talk about the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Firstly, I would like to extend my thanks to everyone because of because of all of you being present here. Because of uh, on such a short notice, so many people have come as audience. So it's a good thing that we all will be here together in this event. So I would like to start my review with a uh, sentence. Habits cannot be charged, changed with single improvement, but by thousands of improvements. This basically means that we cannot change our habits just by improving 1% of our habits. We need to fix, we need to focus on different aspects which can help to fix our habits. I would like to um, talk about a story about this book. I actually got this book last year as my 18th birthday gift and I replaced it. I replaced it with something else because I am not a book reader, I am not an avid book reader. Maybe it was a mistake that I replaced this book with something else because if only I would have gotten this book earlier, it would have saved me lots of troubles in the last one year. Atomic Habits by James Clear can be considered as one of the best books out there in the market which helps you focus on adapting new good habits and breaking down bad habits. This book has explained how to figure out different solutions for problems and the author has simply divided the book in four different laws. The first law would be making it easy, making the habit easy. The second would be making it obvious. The third would be making it attractive. And the fourth would be making it satisfactory. I would like to explain on the first law, make it obvious. What do we mean by making obvious? We need to make a habit obvious as that we can make it noticeable. We need to make our habits noticeable because the key to building good habits and breaking bad ones is that we need to figure out how we are getting triggered and a new habit and a new habit is coming in front of us. For example, if we want to um, break a bad habit like using too much phone, what we can do is we can separate the phone from us. We can keep the phone in another room so that when we wake up next morning, touching our phone won't be the first thing we do after we have woken up. This will guarantee us the success of breaking one habit because we just made the problem obvious. We replaced it. For example, this law states make it obvious, but we can reverse it for bad habits by saying make it invisible. So for bad habits, we can hide the things so that we cannot see it and it doesn't trigger us to um, repeat it again. The second law, make it attractive. What do we mean by making it attractive is we need to make our habits appealing. If we make our habits appealing, it increases the likelihood automatically by we start sticking to the habits more often if we are attracted to our habits. If we think our habits is good for us, we keep on following them and we don't stop the process. The author James Clear has also explained that habits are driven by a reward and simply craving something pleasurable. What this means is, for example, if we need to establish a habit of going to do exercise, what we can do is to get interested in the exercise, we can focus on doing our favorite exercise first so that we are already interested in the process. For example, my favorite exercise would be cardio, for example. So I would start with cardio in the coming in the beginning part so that my focus stays on cardio because it's my favorite thing and my mind won't go off. The second part what we can do is reward us after completion of our habits. After I finish, for example, 30 minutes of working out on doing cardio, I'll reward myself with a small thing which can help me get motivated and keep on practicing this habit. The third law says make it easy. What does make it easy mean? We need to clarify our habits to ourselves first. We need to know which habit we are picking up and how hard it can be for us in coming times. What we can do is, the author has suggested we need to reduce as much as action as possible in the process. For example, if 
there is a tough process to adapt a new habit. It will be difficult for us to continue and practice that habit. So we need to make that process as easy as possible. So it's easy for us to keep on doing that and repeating that every single day. For example, if, you, if I want to establish this reading habit, which I don't have, which I want to establish, so what I can do is, making it easy means, for example, I have a table besides my bed. I'll keep the book there, so when I return to my home, before sleeping, I see the book lying there, I would feel like I should read something. So I'll at least read 10 pages before sleeping. Slowly, slowly, this will become a big habit, and I'll be starting to read chapters by chapters, parts by parts, and so the whole novel someday. If we are trying to break a bad habit in the same sense, as we made things visible, we made it easy for us to grab our things in good habit. The same thing goes in bad habit. For example, someone has a smoking habit. To remove that habit, what they can do is ask all of their friends not to let them buy, pay them money that not, don't let me buy a bag of cigarettes or hide it somewhere so far that you cannot reach it, basically creating an creating obstacle in your way so that it's difficult for you. So what we can conclude from this law is that for a good habit, we need to focus on it and make it as effortless as possible so we can engage in it and practice it. And if it's a bad habit, we need to make it as challenging as possible so it's hard for us to uh, return back to the habit. The fourth law and the last law would be make it satisfying or rewarding ourselves. No process gives you success if you're not interested in it. So to get success from a process, we need to make that process itself satisfying or rewarding. We need to get pleasure by doing something. We need to be satisfied by doing something. Only then by our minds will be fixed on that thing. To apply this law particularly, for example, I need to establish a new habit of going for a run. What I can do is, I can walk two miles, I can take rest and recharge myself, reward myself with my favorite healthy or delicious smoothie. That can be a kind of motivation for me. So this is how um, James Clear has divided the book in four laws. Further, I would talk about an example which he mentioned in the early part of the book that he got hit by a baseball bat. That is the first example in the book. And why does that inspire me is because even after getting hit by a baseball bat and losing his whole athletic career, his whole baseball career, he still kept on working. He still kept on working and still started achieving things. He was still considered a highly reputed athlete even though he did not get to play. Exactly why I would depend on James Clear and I can say the tools he has suggested in this book are as effective as it can be. We learnt about different tools in this book. The first tool I would like to talk about is three layers of change in behavior. For example, we, can, we know that Earth is made up of three parts. Earth is made up of three parts. The middle part is core. The, uh, the inside part is core. The middle part is mantle. And the outermost part is crust. So we can relate that in the same thing. The crust can be our outcomes. The middle part can be our process. And the core part can be our identity. How this works is, first we need to start changing our beliefs. So our identity gets created. Then we need to change our habits. We need to make them better. We need to stop focusing on goals and focusing on the process and the system we create to achieve those goals more. So our process gets better. And ultimately our outcomes, results, our end goal gets better. There's also a tool named four feedback step, which is basically Q, Q, craving, response, and reward. This basically means, Q basically means triggering something in your head, as we can call the first law of this book a Q law, because making it obvious, making it obvious means we know it already. We don't need to do it on their own. As my English teacher mentioned in one of his lectures, we don't have the habit of turning light on as soon as we get in the room. We know it by ourselves. Our mind doesn't need to think more. Thank you.